वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला ऑन द सब्जेक्ट सोशल मेडिसिन एंड कम्युनिटी हेल्थ आई एम प्रोफेसर सी पी मिश्रा वर्किंग इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कम्युनिटी मेडिसिन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेज बनारस हिंदू यूनिवर्सिटी वाराणसी एंड आई सेल्फ डिस्कसिंग द मॉड्यूल इंटाइटल प्योरिफिकेशन ऑफ वाटर दिस मॉड्यूल बिलोंग्स टू द पेपर इन्वायरमेंटल हेल्थ दिस इज अ कंट्रीब्यूशन फ्रॉम अ टीम comprising of myself as principal investigator professor vyam gupta ex professor and head of the department of community medicine institute of medical sciences banaras hindu university the content is written by dr amit kausik from the department of community medicine uttar pradesh rural institute of medical sciences and now it is safai and content has been reviewed by dr j tandon ex professor and head department of community medicine ims bhu varanasi as we all know that water is an important constituent constituent of human body and consumption of safe and wholesome drinking water is a, a, one of the prerequisites of sound physical health therefore purification of water for human consumption is desired and for this session a number of learning objectives has been kept one should understand levels of water purification enumerate steps involved in large scale water purification so these are the two major issues but there are many some uh, specific objectives also which, which i shall be discussing through the course of this module as per world health organization estimates 1.8 million deaths caused by diarrhea every year may be attributed to unsafe water and inadequate sanitation and hygiene so there are a number of water borne diseases but among them diarrhea is uh, very common and it is related to consumption of unsafe water and inadequate sanitation and hygiene in terms of uh, food hygiene in terms of disposal of solid waste and in terms of finger hygiene this imposes a greater risk to the health of under 5 children as compared to combined effect of hiv and malaria we are putting lot of efforts on hiv and malaria but the point is that the combined effect or combined risk produced by these two conditions hiv and malaria is exceeded by the deaths caused by diarrhea approximately 50% population of developing countries receive water from an unreliable and frequently contaminated pipe supply there are different types of water uh, sources pipe water supply hand pumps wells and some people also resort to lakes and rivers also as considered as a drinking source and contaminated water supply even in the best uh, municipalities where every attempt is made to supply chlorinated water but the contamination may take place on the way or in the houses if it is not properly kept if the container which is used for keeping water is not hygienic and also the water that is drawn from that container if hands are dipped or they are not using ladle uh, then it becomes a problematic so supply of safe and wholesome water in any community cannot be thought of unless there is a purification system to purify whatever water is available in for are being supplied for human consumption but there is a big element of contamination at the household level so they, both the uh, both the efforts has to be combined that is one 
the purification of water at the large scale, purification of water at the household level, and whatever purified water is there, the practices should be conditioned so as there should be no recontamination uh, on the way or other thing. Many times, the, when the water supply is intermittent, there is a negative pressure in the pipes, and that may cause suck in uh, certain material which may contain bacteria, viruses, and so on, and may contaminate water. Not only in developing countries, but also in developed countries as well, small community supplies are often liable to contamination and breakdown, and hence pose a consistent risk to the health of the population. So it is a global phenomenon. It is a quite common in developing countries, contamination of water for human consumption, and but there are certain pockets in the developed countries also. So water supply is of primary concern the, in every country, each and every country. Protection of source water from pollution is of great importance in prevention of waterborne diseases. A lot of activities are going on and that contaminate the major water source. The rivers are polluted, lakes are polluted and not only there is a only hazards from biological organisms in terms of bacteria, in terms of viruses, but there may be chemical pollution, there may be excess of certain metals in the water source and that can cause serious damage to the health. So, protection of water source becomes very vital and it is a prevention, its prevention is important in preventing waterborne diseases. May be, may be, it may it could be bacterial, it could be viral, it could be, it could be because of certain elements or metals. Community water treatment procedures, a number of different compounds may be present in surface water that may be removed before use of water for drinking purpose. So water which is available from on the surface water may be having many impurities and that before they must be removed for, before it is supplied for drinking purpose. These compounds may include suspended solids, collared solids and dissolved solids. If the suspended particles are very high, they may change the color of the water, they may change the turbidity of water and or by physical appearance the water may not be uh, acceptable to by the community at large. Steps involving water treatment used by community water systems on large scale water treatment include number one, coagulation and flocculation, number two, sedimentation, number three, Filtration, number four, disinfection, number four, one, as I said, coagulation and flocculation. This is a very important step in purification of water on large scale. First steps in the water treatment, coagulation and flocculation is the primary step, the first step in any water treatment process in large scale. Coagulation is the process in which a coagulant, chemicals with positive charge, is added to water. Once it is added, the positive charge of these chemicals neutralizes the negative charge of dirt and other dissolved particles in the water. So what happens? The positive charge that are present in the added chemicals or coagulant neutralizes the negative charge present on dirt and other dissolved particles in the water, which in turn results in binding of particles with chemicals and formation of larger particles that are, and this process is known as flocculation. Coagulants may be metal coagulants, may be polyelectrolytes. Metal coagulants include ferrous sulphate, ferric sulphate, ferric chloride, aluminium sulphate, aluminium chloride. So a number of coagulants are available, metal coagulants in, and that, that may be used. Uh, the polyelectrolytes may be of two types, natural and synthetic polyelectrolytes. Nat natural are those of the biological origin, examples include alginate, 
cytosine. Synthetic ones are those that are derived from polymerization of monomers, for example, polyamine, sulfonate, and so on. Flocculation is the process by which destabilized particles conglomerate into larger aggregates that can be separated from the water. So, flocculation process, what it does, that it brings particles together and they conglomerate into a larger aggregates and which can be separated. This process increases the size of the particle from some microscopic micro flock to visible suspended particles and which can be easily removed by various methods. So, second step is sedimentation. After flocculation, water is led into a sedimentation tanks where the flocks get settled. So, once flocculation activities are taken on, the water is sent to the sedimentation tanks, time is given and this provides an opportunity to flocks to get settled at the bottom. The time for sedimentation varies from 2 to 6 hours depending upon the quality of water. So, a time of 2 to 6 hours is given for this purpose and depending on the quality of water. Sedimentation is a prerequisite to remove turbidity of water prior to solar or chemical disinfection. The point that's, that is important that we can cannot do directly solar or chemical disinfection. First, uh, the water contains solid suspended particles it is desired that they should be sedimentation must be done so that these turbidity of water is reduced and then we can adopt the process of solar or chemical disinfection. Advantages of sedimentation, sedimentation has several advantages. The, the most important advantage is it is a very simple process, simplicity of the process that it is just giving a time of 2 to 6 hours depending on the quality of water. It allows most of the suspended particles to settle. Low cost removes, removes of settable solids that reduces turbidity and improves penetration of ultraviolet radiation and decreases chlorine demand as well. So there are distinct advantages of the sedimentation process. Not only it reduces turbidity, it also improves the penetration of ultraviolet radiation and therefore, therefore the cooling demand for disinfection also decreases. Makes the water more amenable to other treatment methods. So that's the advantage sedimentation has because other chemical disinfection processes becomes easier once we have got, it has water has gone through the sedimentation process. Decreases solids associated pathogens. Many pathogens just aside on the solids and that are taken care of by this process. Only disadvantage of sedimentation is that solids such as sand, slit and larger microbes get settled, not the clay and smaller microbes. So that that is disadvantage that smaller microbes may not settle and clay matter may be also there. The third step is filtration of water. Filtration is a physical and chemical process and in case of slow sand filters, biological as well. Because slow sand filters in the top, there is a vital layer made of fauna and flora particularly fungi and that vital layer helps in, uh, in disinfection of water, biological as well. The process of passing water through material to be removed, particulate matter and other impurities like flux. Removal of color and turbidity is dependent, depends on chemical characteristics of water put to treatment. If there is more iron, the color may be different. Physical and chemical characteristics of suspended solids, type and degree of treatment prior to filtration like coagulation, flocculation, and clarification. 
Because if you look at the different qualities of drinking water, if there is a lot of turbidity, if there is a color change in the water, no community member is going to accept that. Because that is the first criteria. If the water is not clean, then people will not use it. And therefore, reduction of turbidity and maintenance of colorless nature of water is desired. Types of filters also depend, um, will determine the color and turbidity of water. Filters may be classified as gravity filters, pressure filters. Gravity filters are, which is a box open at the top, contains drainage system at the bottom, filled partially with a filtering medium, usually sand. Raw water remains in the space above the sand, flows down under gravitational force and purification takes place during downward movement of water through filtering medium and treated water is obtained through the under drains. The point is that once this process is adopted, the process is very slow, takes a lot of time. Gravity filters are two types. Number one is slow gravity filters and number two rapid gravity filters. So gravity filters, they, depending on the speed, they can be classified into two ways, slow gravity filters and rapid gravity filters. Purification in slow sand filters, the water to be treated enters into the space of the filter bed containing a superintendent uh, water. Simple water usually remains here for a period of varying from 3 to 12 hours depending on the speed of the filtration. During its stay here, simple water gets purified by uh, sedimentation and by the action of algae in the sunlight which absorbs carbon dioxide and releases oxygen which gets dissolved into the water. There is thin slimy organic layer known as filter skin or samajidirke is present on the top of the sand and that also helps in fil filtration though it is called filter skin. Constitutes of this layer include algae, planktons, diatoms, protozoa and bacteria. Microorganisms present in this layer entrap, digest and break down the organic matter. So this vital layer or the skin, what is called uh, filter skin, has a very important proper role to play. And if the system is choked, then there will be a problem. So the algae, planktons, diatoms, protozoa and bacteria, they have a very important property to break down the organic matter present in the water. After this water enters the sand bed, where purification takes place by staining and adsorption. Electrical forces, chemical bonding and mass attraction are responsible for adsorption. The three processes that contribute to the adsorption portion are electrical forces, chemical bonding and mass attraction. As the water passes through the sand bed particles, including bacterium and viruses coming into the contact of the sand grains get attached by mass attraction or through operation of electrical forces. Flow rate in the sand flow filters is usually 0.1 to 0.3 meters per hour. Elements of slow sand filter, superintendent water reservoir depth is 1 to 1.5 meter which maintains a constant head of water above the filter medium and provides the pressure to carry water through the filter. So, superintendent water reservoir head is always 1 to 1.5 meter and that provides a constant pressure head. The bed of filter medium, fine sand with thickness 0 0.6 to 1.2 meter responsible for purification of water. An under drainage system which supports the filter medium and presents minimum possible 
obstruction to the treated water emerging from the underside of the filter break. System of control valves which regulate the speed of flow through the filter bed. So elements of the source and filters are designed in such a way that the water head is always maintained and also there are certain control valves which regulate the speed and flow of the fil filter uh, water through the filter bed. Rapid sand filters. Rapid sand filters differ from slow sand filters in that the sand with diameter larger than 1 mm effective grain size 0.6 to 2 meter is used in the former as a compared to the much finer sand used in the latter. Purification of water is accomplished by physical removal of suspended folates, including any flaw. Frequent cleaning is required for rapid sand filters by backwashing filters with clean water. So one of the drawbacks of the rapid sand filters is that we need to have frequent cleaning uh, uh, by backwashing methods. The particle size that can be filtered out by a particular size sand filter depends upon particle size of the filter medium and which is as follows. Material, mean diameter, effective filter mass, mesh size, crust granite, mean media diameter is 1.5 to 0.78 millimeter, effective filter mesh size is 100 to 200, crust silica, mean diameter is 0.66 to 0.34 and effective filter mesh size is 140 to 400. Now once we have discussed one type of filter, the other type of filter is pressure filters. Pressure filters are similar to gravity sand filter except that the filter containing bed of the sand or of the another granular material is completely enclosed in a closed vessel through which water is forced under pressure. So everything is same as we have discussed earlier. Only thing is that the water is contained in a closed vessel through which water is forced under pressure. The next step is disinfection. Disinfection is the it is a key process of water treatment system. Without this, water cannot be considered for human fit for consumption. Remaining bacteria present in the water after previous treatment are destroyed by this process. It also provides a residual action to inactivate bacteria introduced by any other further ingress during storage or distribution. The efficiency of any disinfectant depends upon two factors. One is first being the concentration of this disinfectant. Second, the minimum period of time for which the disinfect should remain in contact with water. The, when, uh, say for example, if you are uh, in, in terms of correlation of water supplies, so how much chlorine is needed, that's number one, for disinfecting the water. The second most important is that at least 0.5 ppm of chlorine uh, must be present to take care of any problem, any contamination that takes place on the way. And therefore a residual chlorine is also desired and a minimum contact period of half, say half an hour to one hour is desired so that the water uh, um, the chlorine, chlorine, chlorine and other things takes care of uh, uh, oxidizes arguing matter and takes care of other impurities. Methods used in disinfection disinfections are many. We can do so solar disinfection. We can do go for chlorination. Uh, we can go for ultraviolet radiation. We can go for ozone disinfection. Chlorine dioxide can be used for this purpose and mini filtration. So there are several approaches and some of the approaches can, can be combined also. Solar disinfection, ultraviolet radiation, chlorination, ozone, chlorine of dioxide and mini filtration. A number of methods of disinfection do exist. 
solar disinfection in this process temperature of water is raised for enough period of time in containers which are capable to absorb the heat generated by solar radiation the world health organization consider this technique to be a valid option but only as a lesser and experimental method the other method of disinfection is chlorination chlorination in the field of water disinfection begin the era of technological revolution in water treatment it it, it, it has been one of the major breakthrough in supply of drinking water on a large scale chlorination of water introduced worldwide in the early 20th century characteristics of chlorine compo uh, compounds broad spectrum germicidal property they have good degree of persistence in water distribution systems their their residual amount can be easily measured and monitored in water of treatment and all and are at delivery points the fitting equipment is simple reliable and in inexpensive easy availability of chlorine and chlorine compounds that's another consideration and economic and cost effective so chlorination of water bodies at large scale and at the domestic level by chlorine tablets is has been the major breakthrough in the treatment of water treatment chlorine compounds used for water disinfection are gaseous chlorine chlorinated lime sodium hypochlorite calcium hypochlorite dose of the chlorine dose of the chlorine depends upon the number of factors chlorine demand of water stimulated by herx apparatus the residual chlorine that has to be kept a concentration of 0.5 mg per liter of free residual chlorine after 30 minutes contact period provides a guarantee guaranteed satisfactory disinfection chlorine disinfection mechanisms chlorine in any of its forms get hydrolyzed in water and forms hypochlorous acid hcl in the following way chlorine gas cl2 plus s2 that's what water is equal to hydrogen plus plus chloride plus hcl hypochlorous acid sodium hypochlorite if it is used nocl plus s2 na plus plus oh minus and hcl so hypochlorous acid is generated calcium hypochlorite caocl twice plus 2h2 2 equal to calcium ca uh, that is ca plus 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 2 oh minus plus 2 hocl that is hypochlorous acid hypochlorous acid is split into hydrogenous ion h plus and hypochlorite ocl hocl is equivalent to h plus plus ocl minus disinfecting uh, action of chlorine is mainly due to hypochlorous acid but to lesser extent due to hypochlorite ion also ultraviolet radiation short wave ultraviolet radiation acts on the gen genetic material of the microorganisms and the viruses and destroys without producing any major physical or chemical change in the water the germicidal action is exerted between range of 240 to 280 nanometers with maximum disinfecting capacity close to 260 nanometer and it's mainly due, mainly due to ultraviolet c rays 100 to 280 uh, nanometer suspended or dissolved solids turbidity and color absorb ultraviolet energy and interfere with disinfection water turbidity should be as low as possible if you are using this type of disinfection depth of water should not be more than 75 mm to ensure that ultraviolet reach reaches every part normal exposure time is from 10 to 20 seconds ozone is another disinfecting agent and its action of depends upon its oxidizing effect on cells which makes its effective destroyer of bacteria it is also be effective against viruses spores and resistant bacteria and molds cells so that's the advantage with ozone we have the action of ozone does not depend on so much on contact period as on the doses administered as on the doses administered chlorine dioxide chlorine dioxide has biocidal Efficacy over a wide range of pH, ranging from 3 to 10. The action is mainly due to its ability to permeate the bacterial cell membranes and destroy them. 
in case of viruses it absorbs and penetrates protein coat and the virus capsid and reacts with the viral RNA and damages the genetic capacity of the virus. Chlorine dioxide has lesser microbiocidal, microbiocidal, microbiocidal action as compared to ozone but is stronger disinfectant than chlorine. Mini filtration, disinfection by mini filtration is based upon the physical principle of filtration unlike chlorine, chlorine dioxide or ozone disinfection which acts on the principles of chemical oxidation. Mini filters includes microfiltration, ultrafiltration, nanofiltration, and reverse osmosis. The difference among these categories is mainly due to the membrane pore size. Disinfecting capacity of these membranes depend on their ability to retain the pathogens larger than the pore size. Mini filtration characteristics are mini -fil mini -fil pore diameter pressure retention membrane, reverse osmosis. 4 diameter micron less than 0 0.001, pressure 200 to 1500, ESI, retention, uh, retention filter substances, salts, free radicals. Nano filtration, 4 diameter microns 0 0.001 to 0 0.01, pressure 70 to 250, ESI, sugars, mo molecules uh, are taken care of. Ultra filtration, 0 0.01 to 0.1, 4 diameter, 15 to 200 PSI collides, viruses and microfiltration 0.1 to 0.2, pressure is 10 to 15, bacteria and cysts are taken care of. After discussing the large water uh, treatment at the community level, household water treatment procedures are boiling, staining through the fine cloth, charcoal filter, ceramic filters, chlorination and storage. These are important. Boiling. Boiling the water is one of the effective ways to kill the microorganisms present in it. WHO recommends that for boiling to be an effective means of disinfection, water should be brought to a vigorous boil, which enables killing of inactivation of most organisms that cause bacteria. The problem with boiling is that uh, many times the water uh, test in changes and that may be not acceptable in the communities. Staining through fine cloth. Water is poured through a piece of fine clean cloth to remove some of the suspended solids. Charcoal filters. Filtration through granular charcoal is an effective means to improve the taste, order and color of water. Ceramic filters. The filter is porous, unglazed ceramic cylinder in which the impurities get deposited on the surface of filter. The efficiency of ceramic filters depend upon the pore size. Filters with very fast, small pores can remove most pathogens. The ceramic filter method can only be used with fairly clean water. Chlorination, chlorination of water at household level can be done by an emergency measure as well as a part of everyday life. Concentrated chlorine solution is added to the water. The mixture is stirred and left for at least 30 minutes during the period. Pressure pay, uh, period to chlorine reacts and oxidizes the organic matter. After 30 minutes, the concentration of residual chlorine in the water should be between 0 0.2 to 0.5 milligram per liter. The chlorine tablets can be also used. One tablet is uh, adequate for water of 20 uh, uh, liters and after a contact period, uh, this water can be used. The storage of water, storing water for only one day can eliminate some bacteria. The longer the water is stored, the more the suspended solids and pathogens get settled. Now, after discussing so much, we can summarize at the end by saying that approximately half population in the countries receive water from unreliable sources. And protection of water from pollution is of great importance in prevention of waterborne diseases and maintenance of optimal health, physical health. Household water treatment and purification of water on a large scale are key interventions in minimizing waterborne diseases. Finally, thank you very much for visiting EPG Part Salah.